Cocaine or morphine? It is cocaine, my dear fellow. A 7% solution. And back to my old flower. Would you like to try some? Certainly not. Oh, I'm so sorry. I have no desire to destroy my system before it's time. Quite right, my dear doctor, quite right. You see, my time has come. My dear Holmes, over the past few months I have noticed you taking ever-increasing doses of these deadly drugs. Once they lay hold of you, there is no end. You must go on and on until the finish. So you must go on and on eating your breakfast until the finish. Yes, but breakfast is food. These drugs are poisons, slow but certain. And they involve tissue changes of a most deadly nature. Just what I want. I'm bored to death with my own tissues. I want to get a whole new lot. <laughs> oh. Really, Holmes, I'm only trying to save you. So don't even try. Watson, change the subject a little. In the enthusiasm which has prompted you to chronicle and, if you'll excuse my saying so, somewhat to embellish a few of my little adventures, you have occasionally committed the error, or indiscretion, of giving them a certain tinge of romance, which always struck me as being a trifle out of place. I merely refer to this in case you should see fit at some future time to chronicle the most important and far-reaching case of my career. One upon which I have labored for nearly 14 months and which is rapidly approaching a singularly diverting climax. I allude to the case of Professor James Moriarty. Moriarty? I don't believe I've ever heard of a fellow. Or not Napoleon or crime. Watson the Napoleon. He sits like an ugly venomous spider at the center of his web. But that web has 10,000 radiations, and that spider knows every quiver of every one of them. This is very interesting, Holmes. My dear doctor, the real interest will come when the professor begins to realize his position, which he cannot fail to do shortly. By 10 o'clock tomorrow, the time will be right. Clearing up a book of 40 mysteries and the rope for every one. Good. But what will he do when he knows you have him? Do? Why, my dear doctor, he will do me the honor of devoting every resource of his wonderful organization of criminals to the one purpose of my destruction. Holmes, this is very dangerous. On the contrary, it's perfectly delightful. It saves me any number of doses of those deadly drugs on which you occasionally pay for me with your medical. is spent in a series of frantic endeavors to escape from the dreary commonplaces of existence. For a brief period, I escape. You should congratulate me. Yes, but would you, you could escape without such serious risks. Your other cases were not so dangerous, and they were even more interesting. For example, the one you spoke of last time we met, uh, the retrieving of these letters from the young girl, uh, oh, very strange affair as I remember it. You were going to try an experiment of having her betray their hiding place with an alarm of fire in her home. And, uh, and after that... Precisely, Watson. After that. Yes. And I believe... Uh, Did it not succeed, then? Of course, as far as it's gone. Yes. Well... And I believe you were putting Foreman in her house as butler. Foreman was in as butler. And upon your signal, he was to overturn the lamp in the kitchen scattering fireballs about and causing an alarm of fire. And the young lady, did she? Yes, she did, Watson, she did. It all transpired precisely as planned. I took the packet of papers from its hiding place, and as I told you I would, I handed it back to yes, Miss Faulkner. But you never told me why you proposed to hand it back. For a very simple reason, my dear fellow, that it would have been theft for me to take it. The contents of the package were the absolute property of the young lady. Yes, but what did you gain by this? Her confidence, 
and so far as I was able to secure it, her regard, as it was impossible for me to take possession of the letters, photographs, and jewelry in that package without her consent. My only alternative is to obtain that consent, to induce her to relinquish it of her own free will. Its return to her after I had laid hands on it was the first step in that direction. The second will depend entirely on what transpires today. I expect Foreman here to report in half an hour. I beg you to pardon me, sir. Z boy, he said to come right up as soon as I come. Quite right, quite right. Ah, I fear there is trouble, Miss Yai. Z boy, your assistant, the one who sent me to you? Oh. Him, Foreman, is there something done to him? I fear to go down to sea. Down? Where? Z down. Z said that the house is a dreadful place. He did not come back. He went down. He did not come up. Who sent him down? Miss Yai at the house. Miss Yai at Chetwood. Ladder. Has he been down there long? No, for I soon suspect the dreadful noise was heard. Oh, the noise. What noise? The noise. I beg you to be calm and answer me. What did it sound like? The dreadful cry of a man who was struck down by some deadly thing. Coat, boot, and order a cab. Quick! Yes, sir. Did anyone follow him down? I did not see. What? The game's afoot. Take this and follow me. I'd better not go also. No, wait here. Ah, I think I hear Foreman coming down. Oh, my word. Nothing more last night, sir. After you left, Prince came in, and they made a start to her room. But all I gave the three knocks with the axe on the floorboards, as you directed, and they didn't get any farther. Then this morning, a little after nine. One moment. Mr. Yes, uh, mademoiselle. Step into that room and rest yourself. But I'm not tired, monsieur. Then step into that room and walk about a bit. I'll let you know when you are required. What? Can you take a look at his head? That's all right. Really, really, it's nothing at all. Take a look at his head, Watson. Yes. Let me have a look here. Oh, dear. It's an ugly bruise, but nothing that serious. Very well. A little after nine, you say? Yes, sir. This morning, a little after nine, Mr. Larrabee and his wife drove away. At about eleven, she came back without him. A little while later, only Lockyer came by, and the two went to work in the library. I was going to look from the outside. They was making up a counterfeit of the package we're working for. You'd better watch for some sharp trick, sir. No, they'd better watch for the sharp trick, Foreman. And Larrabee, what of him? Came back a little after three. What did he see? Under great excitement, sir. Any marked resentment towards you? I think there was, and we tried not to show it. He has consulted someone outside. Was the Larrabee woman's behavior different also? She gave me an ugly look as she came in. Ah, an ugly look. She was present at the consultation. They were advised to get rid of you. He sent you down into the cellar on some pretext. You were attacked in the dark by two men, possibly three and received a bad blow from a sand club. You managed to strike down one of your assailants with a stone, no piece of timber, and escaped from the others in the dark, crawling out through a coal grating. That's what took place, sir. They have taken in a park, and a dangerous one at that. Mm. He not only directed this conspiracy against you, but he also advised the making of the counterfeit pack. Time, I shall receive an offer from Mr. Larrabee to sell me this package. He will indicate that Miss Faulkner has changed her mind and desires to get what she can for them. He will desire to meet me on the subject and will then endeavor to sell me his bogus package for an enormous sum of money. After that... Let us sell. Most support will let us sell. Ah, I believe the said communication is at hand. It is. So read it for me, Watson. There's a good fellow. My eyes, you know, cocaine. Thank you, sir. All those other things you like so much. 